Good evening. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, you have logged in because you're obviously interested in study abroad and you're, and you're interested in something that we are interested in. I'm Dr. Mena Chawla Singh. I'm an educator. I'm a professor. I have taught both in India and abroad. Um, I have lived and worked and researched in a variety of different countries with a lot of international exposure in France, in the US, in Russia, in Israel, in Japan, and so on and so forth. Um, most recently, I have taught in the US and I have lived in France, which is why I'm speaking from the perspective of an educator. So this is being hosted by Leverage Edu, and we're available on all the social media platforms. Uh, you will be able to see a recording of this if you miss it, but if you're here with us, wonderful. We are speaking here today about Europe. We are speaking about Europe as a destination for study abroad. And Leverett Edu supports students end to end for their study abroad journey from the very beginning, from when you dream about a university to the testing that is done, to the goal setting, to the application process, to helping you with the visa and to accomplishing accomplishing that journey successfully and reaching where you dream to be. So with that in mind, I'm focusing today on this destination of Europe. I'm looking at Europe today. Um, I want you to think more globally. If you are thinking of study abroad, you are already dreaming of being a global citizen, of having global opportunities. So I want you to think a little more broadly of course, you will look at the program, you will look at the university, but I want you to think more broadly now about the destinations that you choose. And I want you to think about EU, Europe, the continent, a small continent, but really, really critical. Why? First of all, the diversity. You know that Europe, the EU, as it's called the European Union, has 27 states, not 28. Why? Because somebody left that, Brexit. So Britain is no longer part of EU. EU has 27 states, and there are many, many shared agreements between those states. Now you will say, why does that affect a study abroad student? It does. You should look up the term Bologna process. It's a, it's a, a series of ministerial uh, conversations, discussions, which have created a standardization of higher education and uh, credits across Europe. What does that mean? That means that if you land up in one country in Europe, it might be possible for you, if you think of another university, to transfer some of those credits and go to another country. Why am I saying this? <clears throat> Suppose you're in a particular country doing hospitality and you find out that actually Switzerland has a better school. You might within Europe even be able to do something like that. Why am I speaking about this? I want you to see Europe, EU, as an interconnected destination, which provides you with diversity of language and of countries. But within the EU, there is a lot of flexibility and mobility, both for prospects for jobs, employability, and so on and so forth. For example, you might work on a degree in pharma in one country. And you might actually find that, again, I'm mentioning Switzerland or France, that they have really amazing um, industries and prospects in the pharma sector. So this is how I want you to think of EU. It is a very, very diverse region. You can travel through EU with one visa. It's called the Schengen visa. So you have two new terms today, the Schengen visa and the Bologna process. They will, they, this is to underline that there is so much interconnected interconnectivity within Europe itself. And also when you look at destinations, it is um, very common for students to think automatically of Germany or of Ireland. We are definitely going to talk about those two countries, but I also want you to think that there are many, many other countries that you may not have thought about. And therefore this session is to underline a few things. As I was doing research for this, I realized that there, is, uh, there are lots and lots of jobs and opportunities in the life sciences in both Germany and France. That the pharma industry is a growth industry. And um, it may not have struck you, but Switzerland has some of these global powerhouses like Novartis and Roche. And Roche. So those are some of the examples to tell you that within that um, interconnected unit of countries, there is both diversity and potential. As far as um, 
living conditions goal it is also something to think about that these are this is a region of very very good state support in the sense that healthcare and uh, infrastructure public transportation all of those things are on the welfare model which is that you don't have to pay big insurance money for healthcare and so on and so forth so with this in mind let me just tell you what our plan is for today in this session i have with me Smriti Gupta, who is a very well experienced uh, counselor who has been advising uh, hundreds of students in recent years about their destinations and how to reach them through the process of applications and so on. So um, in a short while, um, Smriti will share with us her understanding and her wisdom about two countries, about destinations, Germany and Ireland. And then I will come back to you with some more remarks and i will um mention things that might stimulate you to think of other destinations as well so over to you smriti uh i'm going to talk about germany and ireland when we talk about germany we have to understand that they have a public education system and that means that the cost of education is minimal to none especially for students who are already in germany but for international students as well there are a lot of institutions that offer a uh, great programs with very little uh, fee and the research quality is something that's extremely high because germany boasts of best in the world faculty and their faculty are very very well acclaimed and they have um, great credentials and therefore the research quality is very high and there is a very growing indian community in germany because germany is one of those um, pieces that have been sidelined for a while which is now being rediscovered by people in india so indian students are more and more getting attracted to germany <clears throat> and hence the german community the indian community in germany is growing at a very high rate so it is going to be a destination that will offer you kind of a home away from home uh, if you can say that um most of sought after courses in germany are in science and technology because that is one area that's very booming because it's a developed country and therefore the kind of jobs that are available after you graduate from a stem field is uh, like the potential is expansive so therefore masters in computer science masters in data science masters in data analytics these are courses that are most sought after in germany and they have a great the uh, employability rate now let's discuss some of the requirements of a german application uh when we look through the german application process it is fairly simple all applications all applications these days are online germany gives a lot of importance to standardized test scores like the gre gmat and also the academic performance of these students and by academic performance i mean grades that a student obtains in their bachelor's and in class 12 and 10 these kind of grades um the other thing that's extremely important in the german process of application would be the essays and having a knowledge of german even if it's working knowledge of german can be extremely favorable because germany wants people to stay behind and be integrated within their economy let's talk a little about the best universities um and i'll give you an idea of the cost attached to these universities as well the top university and i think everyone would have heard about this would be lmu and it's in munich it has no tuition fee because it's a public university there is only a semester fee that you need to pay which is also a maximum of 200 euros and that would if you convert it to indian rupee would around would be around 18000 rupees the second would be tmu um munich and that also has no tuition fee because it's a public university the semester fee again is same uh, as lmu which is 18000 rupees um the third one is heidelberg university and in that an undergraduate undergraduate degree can cost you up to 32 lakh um i'm converting all of these figures into rupees to make it more accessible to our audience the post graduate fee ranges from 3.5 lakhs to 35 lakhs and the 3.5 lakhs course is not going to be as advanced uh, or professional as the 35 lakhs course so the 35 lakhs fee is going to be for a course like an mba 
and a professional degree which is going to make you extremely employable in that area we have charity university in berlin where the fee varies from 2 to 5 lakhs per semester so even if you have four semesters you end up just paying 20 lakhs and nothing more than that and that's like the higher end of the more advanced and professional courses university of tubingen the fee also varies from 0 to 1.3 lakh per semester and uh, long term prospects in germany are great because they have recently introduced the skilled immigration act which makes it easier for people with advanced degrees to immigrate to the country you can have a eu blue card through which you can travel all around you and uh, post your study what you will have to do is apply for a residence permit of 18 months and during that time you can look for employment and you can continue working and after that you'll have to get a work visa now let's talk a little bit about ireland ireland has a mix of public and private education it is not an entirely free education system the education system great research quality and output both are great and the employment the employment rate is very high because of the presence of multinational companies uh, in ireland there are a lot of multinationals which are headquartered in ireland and therefore the best in rank universities are here the best programs are here it is cheaper than us and uk and another thing that's attractive about ireland is the fact that it allows its students to work part time and earn so the financial burden of doing a course in ireland is also something that is going to be lesser than any other country um and they also have a two year post study work visa let's look at what are the most sought after courses there be um, courses in biotechnology a uh, masters in computer science it systems masters in management masters in business analytics requirements of the application process and again the application process is mostly online universities in ireland do not focus too much on gre and gmat which are standardized test scores unless you are applying for a professional degree like a mba you would not be required to submit any of these scores they value academic performance and the story that you tell the universities about your motivation within the essays so greater importance is placed to the essays within this application process let's take a look at the best universities in ireland and i'll give you a range of their fees for different courses we have trinity college dublin and there's no it needs no introduction so the fee here ranges from 5 to 41 lakh we have rcsr university medicine and health science they have great programs in public health and medicine it is a little on the expensive side the fee here is 50 lakh but then you are getting an mbbs degree that's a professional degree for, for a professional degree university college dublin fee ranges from 10 to 50 lakh national university of ireland galway fee ranges from 7 to 40 lakh <coughs> ucc cork fee ranges from 8 to 40 lakh and the prospects are great um the prospects of immigration are very high because after 5 years you can apply for a permanent residence permit and the two year study work visa makes it easier for you to find employment and get employment um over to you ma'am Thank you Smriti that was a whole compendium of really wonderful details that everybody who's listening can can pack away i want to once again zoom back a little bit out to say that um the variety within europe is what i'm trying to stress within our conversation today because it's not hard for people to open up a, a um you know a set of websites and look at different um, different programs in different countries but i do want to emphasize that a couple of things that run as common features that are important to study abroad students especially from india one of them is just that the fees in europe are so much lower many of those places as you mentioned have um no fee really or very low fees and the ones that do have fees give you first rate professional degrees uh, with which your employability is so much more so the financial cost is important also please remember that compared to us or canada it's half the way from home is half the journey instead of whatever 18 hours 16 hours is actually 8 to 10 hours the variety within europe please don't imagine all of europe to be cold and freezing in the north it is cold there is iceland which does not have ice it's just called iceland it's quite green actually so there's iceland and the scandinavian countries and all the way down in the south is the south of france and there's greece and there's italy So imagine that there are the Alps in the north, and then 
there is the Mediterranean. So there's tremendous variety. The travel is very easy. It's within hours. You can go from one European capital to another, from Berlin to France or London to Paris, uh, within a couple of hours sometimes by train. So think of the place also as the way that you're going to experience it. And in terms of experience, I do want to say that the way they the, the way that EU has variety in the kinds of places and the kinds of courses and the regions that you should not be daunted by just the idea that language is a problem. Why is language a problem? Language can also be a strength. When you go for study abroad, if you take up a short course and most universities will have that course, if you take up a short course, uh, you know, let me assure you that when the language is being spoken outside in the bus and in the shops and you are learning it, you will learn it within months in no time at all. It is what happened to me many years ago when I went to Russia. I was studying and I was also studying Russian, but I learned it so much faster because I needed it outside my class as well. And I want to say that many of those cities that uh, Smithy just mentioned, uh, where the universities are located, are really beautiful cities. They are a pleasure to live in. Heidelberg in Germany is beautiful. Munich is beautiful. In Ireland, Edinburgh is beautiful. So those are cities that make me nostalgic because I have been to them for conferences and various other research activities. So I want to also mention one other destination that you may not have thought about. And that is um, uh, Norway. So I want to say that masters in Norway um, is also an option you should think about. Uh, it's a very welcoming country to uh, foreign students. And that's also important. It has a very egalitarian approach to higher education and all masters programs in Norway are free. And many of them are in English. So it's a country with very small population and considering that it has 10,000 foreign students at various levels of study. It has courses in business analysis, in business analytics, in strategy, in brand building, in energy, natural resources, environment, and so on and so forth. And let me just throw out one other place that you may not have thought about, that's Estonia. Estonia is among the top three in the, in the EU for startup founders. Did you know that? That's a really interesting fact. So look up Estonia and see what the jobs are like. And they have a lot of jobs in startups. So that's something to think about also as uh, employability in various sectors, including tech, data, pharma, health sciences, and so on and so forth. I'm going to say a little bit about France. It is a country in which I lived for three years, so I do know a little bit about it. Um, the international MBAs do very often offer you programs uh, for international students, which means that they don't expect you to know lots of French when you go there. If you learn French on the side, it's always going to be an asset. So I want to say that the um, MLOB school has a whole spectrum of, of courses on cybersecurity, on data analytics, all the way to sports management, if that's what you like. Then there is ESSEC, E-S-S-E-C. -S I will not say the uh, expanded version in French because I will surely mispronounce it. So it's called ESSEC. Similarly, there's INSEAD, I-N-S-E-A-D. INSEAD has two campuses, one in Asia and one in France. So it offers you tremendous mobility in being able to do a degree uh, with a really wonderful cohort of international students. About France, if those of you, if there are some of you here who are thinking of the luxury industry, remember that fashion, the industry of fashion, has one billion jobs across the world. Then there is also wine. And I want to say to you that I'm planning to do another session on just the opportunities and the courses in the luxury industry. India is a growing market for luxury. There are consumers in this country who are growing. Asia is increasingly the market to consume, consume luxury industries. So we will have another session on that. And um, Spriti, I'm going to go back to you with a few more details about degrees in France, please. Definitely, ma'am. So hospitality and tourism management or just hospitality management and sciences related to the same are extremely popular in France, so extremely popular all over the world, and that degree can actually increase your employability a lot because there is a demand for uh, these kind of services all across, and travel is a booming industry, and it is supposed to 
grow by leaps and bounds in the coming years so if you're looking at france for degrees in hospitality tourism and management i can kind of give you an idea of the best schools to target we have a masters in hospitality then you have a masters you have an msc in hospitality <coughs> management there is an mba in tourism and msc in hospitality management as well along with the msc in hospitality and certain schools that you can look to target would be luxury hotel school institute hall essex essex the very famous essex that offers multiple mbas also offers an msc in hospitality management and aim escp escp is also another school that multiple people look at with the lens of only an mba degree but you can kind of explore other degrees related to tourism and hospitality management over there and all of these colleges have bachelor's programs as well and they have certificate programs which students just out of class 12 can also engage in so the avenues are wide open and you can look at all of these universities for these programs in france and the culture of the place is such that it already is a kind of you know a very famous in the world and it's it's a lovely tourist place but besides that people from france were into these kind of services are valued all over the world so your value as an asset to any company joining after this degree is also going to increase and you can use these options for us i just want to reiterate that uh, you have a you've had a, what shall i say a glimpse of the way that counselors at leverett edu would take care of you in terms of finding the options that you can have and work with and uh, walk you through the selection process so that your decisions are the most appropriate for you so this is um, a, a startup it started in 2017 and leverett edu has already supported and coached thousands of students who have who are already thriving in universities overseas because it is a startup that has expanded so fast that's a reflection on how well they take care of you in your journey to your dream university smriti do we have any questions Uh, yes ma'am we have a question around academic performance and how important are grades in the university application process uh grades in and this is this is just an idea of the masters process bachelor's process seems a little there is a little different uh, from the masters in the masters if you're looking different countries place different value on academic grades in the bachelor's so countries like ireland they will want a holistic profile so they will not attach too much value to only the academic performance and therefore there is scope for you to make up for that within your application process by substantiating your motivation in your essays and talking about the other activities that you are looking at but if you are looking at science and tech courses especially in a country like germany germany has programs which are academically very rigorous and therefore they do attach a value to academic uh, performance within your bachelor so having a good grade in university is something that is going to be advantageous in a germany but it might not put you at too much of an of a vantage point in a country like ireland so when we talk about academic performance we have to take the geography the country the culture a little in mind so one of the questions that we often encounter is this issue of language um a lot of students tend to think that because if if going to an english speaking destination is going to make things so much easier yes i do agree that if you walk into a place as a new person as a foreigner and you speak the language it makes a very big difference i have lived in countries where i was speaking the language that i'm speaking now i've also landed myself in countries where i was not speaking the language and believe me i was really enriched to live in those countries because there was that much more to learn i also feel that at the end of it if you've done a study abroad and you are getting ready to be a global citizen then your exposure to cultural diversity linguistic diversity is an asset that is how you gather skills to be truly a global citizen and to be able to show your employability as somebody who is fit and ready to thrive in an increasingly globalized world not somebody who goes from one comfort zone to another comfort zone so it is something that you can actually leverage for yourself to say that i wanted to 
I was curious too, and I wanted to learn more. And I see that as enrichment for myself. Do we have another question? We just have a minute or so. Yeah, it was a, it's basically around the difference in the academic year in the okay. US, Canada. We can do that briefly, yes. Yeah. So um, the idea is basically that most universities have at this point kind of aligned the start of their academic year. But in UK, you do not have a spring semester as you do in the United States of America. So most courses would start in September. Um, and Europe as well in September. And the deadlines differ a little. So Europe allows you a little leeway to apply later at later points as well. So the United States of America does not do so. So for example, at the moment also university applications in Europe and UK are open, but university applications for international students in the United States of America have mostly closed down. So that is kind of the basic difference between the academic. Thank you. These are finer points that students can check with us once they decide where they want to go. And uh, you know that at the moment, everything is closed for the US and students are waiting to get their visas. So that application process and acceptance is all done and gone. Uh, we are reaching the end of our session and I just want to reiterate um, to finally sum up and say that if you're considering EU, remember that in terms of a law and order situation, a welfare-driven state, a welfare-driven society is basically. In terms of healthcare and the way that the that EU invests in education, public transportation, public health, those are very important things to keep in mind, apart from the fact that, they, that EU has some of the oldest and the most prestigious universities in the world. Heidelberg actually is one of them. So, you're, so see the issue of languages as a chance to learn something new, uh, enjoy the, um, the Schengen travel zone of being able to travel in 22 countries without needing an extra visa. And that's important too. It's a place where you can get diverse work experience and prove to future employers that you are truly exposed to a multicultural, increasingly globalized world. So on that, we will say bye-bye and we look forward to seeing you. Um, you can get a free counseling session, a 30-minute free counseling session at Leverett Edu. So reach out by phone or any of the social media handles. And we have about a minute now. So I will say goodbye. And uh, Spriti, you will add anything you wish to. Yes. Uh, for end-to-end -end services of making your dream a reality, reach out to EverageEdu at LeverageEdu.com, where you get best university admission service and we'll make sure that you're not facing any problem at all in the whole process when it seamlessly happens that you, from your home, end up at your university, of, like at the university of your dreams. Besides that, I also want to talk to you about the Leverage Edu Scholarship. We have released this scholarship, started a scholarship worth 5 crore, which is India's largest study abroad scholarship. And we're rolling out winners every fortnight. So do apply if you have an advert for any of the universities and get a chance to win that scholarship. And yes, reach out to us at any point of need. Thank you so much, Manavam. Thank you. Thank you, Smithy. Thank you, everybody who joined us. Bye-bye.